How's it going, guys? We have a medium difficulty question for pharmacology. 46-year-old man, he's got high blood pressure on two separate occasions. They want you to know, and they'll ask this on NBME, that if the patient has a high blood pressure reading, you have to redo it in one to two weeks before you start medication. Fine. His BMI is normal at 24. You need to know for risk factors that being overweight is the number one factor that contributes to hypertension. Okay, so if a patient has high blood pressure, if they lose weight, that's more important than smoking cessation. If they have a BMI in the normal range, we call it essential hypertension, which just means differences in patient's reabsorption of sodium at the kidney as well as vascular compliance. So idiopathic hypertension. Patient has commenced on nalapril and ACE inhibitor, which the following most likely seen as patient has resolved this pharmacotherapy. Choice A. Decreased efferent arteriolar diameter is wrong. Angiotensin II constricts the efferent arteriole, leaving the kidney. So an ACE inhibitor means we would have less angiotensin II effect at the efferent arteriole. So we get less vasoconstriction, where diameter therefore is increased. It's not technically correct to say that an ACE inhibitor causes vasodilation. It's more that we have an attenuation of vasoconstriction. In contrast, you could say that prostaglandins cause vasodilation at the afferent arterioles going to the kidney, and NSAIDs, therefore, would decrease the vasodilatory effects of prostaglandins at the afferent arterioles. NSAIDs do not cause vasoconstriction, per se. Choice A, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, increased ejection fraction, correct answer, ACE inhibitors. So when you think about what angiotensin II does, we said it constricts the E ferrin arterioles leaving the kidney. It also upregulates aldosterone synthase, the zona glomerulosa of the adrenal cortex, increasing aldosterone, fine. Angiotensin II also binds to its receptors on systemic arterioles, causing increased afterload. So when you give an ACE inhibitor or an angiotensin II receptor blocker, you're decreasing constriction of the systemic arterioles, decreasing afterload on the left ventricle, thereby enabling the left ventricle to pump more easily and ejection fraction increases. This is also why ACE inhibitors or ARBs are the first line pharmacotherapy for heart failure, because when ejection fraction is low, you can improve it by giving the ACE inhibitors or ARBs in addition to their decreased remodeling effect on myocardium. Let's just knock out the other ones. Choice C, increased PCT sodium reabsorption is wrong. Angiotensin II, one of its effects is it can directly increase sodium reabsorption at the PCT. So if you give an ACE inhibitor where you knock out the effects of angiotensin II slash decrease in synthesis, then you'd have decreased PCT reabsorption of sodium. Choice C, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, increased serum bicarbonate is wrong. So angiotensin II, if we block the synthesis by giving an ACE inhibitor, we're going to decrease aldosterone synthesis. Aldosterone, one of its effects is to cause the secretion of protons at the cortical collecting duct of the kidney. So aldosterone normally can cause a metabolic alkalosis in high amounts. But if we block the effects of aldosterone, then we would retain protons in the serum. If we retain protons, and bicarbonate levels would lower. Wrong fucking answer. Should I see Kaleris is wrong, fancy word that I've mentioned in my prior clips, which just means micturation, urination of potassium. So if you block the effects of aldosterone by giving an ACE inhibitor, then you would decrease the secretion of potassium distally since that's one of the roles of aldosterone. Wrong fucking answer.